Well, in his late teens, Neil Day had the opportunity to accept one of three offers to play rugby league on a first grade level or pursue the family business and continue his harness racing career, of course, following in the footsteps of his famous dad, Frank. Of course, he chose the latter. I caught up with Neil to have a chat about both rugby league and harness racing. Well, Neil, before we have a chat about the harness racing career, more on the rugby league side of it, late teens, you get offers from various rugby league clubs, but how did it all start? Oh, yeah, just, just playing local football and um, up at Goulburn, Group 8 and, and whatnot. Uh, then some of the pub sides, yeah, had, had a couple of us to go, to go to Sydney, but, yeah, sort of tied up with the horses and didn't, didn't think ever, anything of it. And the money back then wasn't, was nothing like that's on, on offer now, so we just kept doing what we, we, what we knew we were doing. And what time are we talking about now? Uh, clubs, yeah, uh, Cronulla, West, uh, uh, Western Suburbs at that time, and St George. And what year were we speaking of? Oh, that would have been 79, about 79 and then early 80s. And what role did you play as far as rugby league is concerned? Oh, I played, played a lot of lock forward. Um, little bit of 5-8 and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, quite enjoyed it and yeah, met a lot of good people. I've still got a lot of good friends out of it now. Still interesting times, that particular time, Neil, those late 70s with all those three clubs. Did you give it serious thought? Oh, no, not really because we're sort of too busy with the horses and that sort of thing and um, yeah, I yeah, wasn't one for, for leaving home at that age so I, I just stayed home and kept doing what we were doing. Well, the Day family certainly rate very highly when we talk about wonderful achievements in harness racing, none more so 1981 friendly footman salutes the judge, trained by your dad Frank, driven by Kevin Newman. Now, your dad said at the time, Neil, he had the best horse, he knew that, so he got the best driver. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, he, he, he was a lovely horse. He was a very good horse, very good juvenile, raced the, raced the best of his age, um, and he... he kept it on later on, um, suffered badly with um, quarter cracks and whatnot and it was only dad's expertise there that um, kept him on the track and at that stage he was going very very good and, and I don't think it was the strongest miracle mile but um, he he thought he could win it and that's why he put old Kev on and no one knew the track better than he did. Your thoughts on that particular win? Oh yeah it was a great achievement and, um, and it was great like that horse come through the family and uh, they were clients that had been with the with the family for quite a few years and it was great to see. Those clients you speak of, Ken Friend in particular, one of the Pardos, couldn't have come at a better time. His property was ravished by bushfire so that Miracle Mile money came very handy. Yeah, there were two brothers, Cliff and, and, and Ken. Cliff Lynn lived locally in town and um, Kenny lived out at, out at Dalton. Uh, like you said, them fires come through and um, did, did ravage the farm pretty badly. Uh, we actually went and helped fight the fires there and move horses and whatnot. Um, yeah, so the wind did come at a good time for them. The Day family had to wait just 12 months before they were back in the winner's circle at a Miracle Mile 1982. Gundary Fly, one of the most controversial Miracle Miles, and Michael greeting the judge. Yeah, um, it was a bit, bit funny leading up to that. Dad wanted him back in the draw and Michael didn't want to put him back in the draw but dad had his way and and uh, then he come out and drew the drew the one alley which was probably the, the worst alley for him to draw and if it was today he would have been a, a um, late scratching and wouldn't have went around but as luck has it he, um, they give him the second chance or the third chance and um, yeah he was on the night he was far too good for him great horse ability wise he's probably as Probably as good as I've seen ability-wise. Some of the things I've seen that horse do, um, yeah, you won't see him again today. And what about your career as far as learning from your dad? What was the most important lesson you learned from Frank? Yeah, just listen to the horse because, you know, he'd watch him very closely. Um, if you work working a horse and it, the horse would be going, going real good and then all of a sudden you'd be adding a bit of gear and doing different things with him and he'd say what's he what's he doing wrong and you'd tell him he'd say well he's talking you're not listening so he was uh, 
he studied the horse very, very closely and, and new, numerous people you hear him say today, you know, the horse talks, you just got to listen and he was a great one at doing that. So, you know, just little things, whether a horse wants to walk over to the track and go to work or whether he doesn't and that, they tell a lot of stories. You've had a decorated career in harness racing yourself, Neil, the best of your horses? Oh, there's been a few nice horses. I haven't had the, the champion like Gunnery Flyer or, or whatnot, but there's been some very good horses. Um, the Truel, Truel Brothers, they've been um, great supporters of me through through the time, and we had a few nice horses, Burling Game and, you know, Pocket Vance. There was, yeah, Camlock come through the stable, uh, Cashel Lou, Ben's Image. Um, yeah, there's been some very nice horses there. Magic Operative was another one. Magic Bliss. Yeah, very, very good money spinners and, and good horses in their own right. In the Pookie of Powers, Neil, how many horses did you have compared to what you've got today? Oh, yeah, worked a team of about 30 to 35. Yeah, I, I only poke around with about 8 or 10 now. Yeah. The family, Justin, your son, didn't really get involved in horse racing, but is a, a very highly regarded farrier. Yeah, he shoots for a lot of, a lot of good stables now. Um, you know, he, he's up at Canberra and doing quite a few main stables there. He did travel down here to Sydney for a piece, um, done a bit of an apprenticeship under a bloke down here. They were shoeing at Snowdens and, and whatnot. So, you now he goes very, very good at it. He's very uh, meticulous at, he, at his job and, um, yeah, very highly regarded, you know, up around our area in Canberra. So he's going, going good. You spoke of the Snowdens. Your daughter Hayley got involved in the thoroughbred industry. Yeah, she, um, she did have um, aspirations to be a, be a jockey. She had quite a few trial rides and was going very good. Uh, that was under Guy Walter and then Guy passed away. And um, I, Guy, Guy rung up and or I rung Guy and said, you know, we probably got to put a stop to it because the weight was killing her. She was living on peanuts and lettuce leaves and whatnot and unbearable at home. So, and... Uh, Guy said, oh, he said, it's, it's a hard thing. I said, yeah. I said, but they've got to have a bit of a life as well. So she went away from that. And then she, uh, when Guy passed, she ended up moving down to um, Snowden. She rode track work there for three or four years and um, worked in the office. And now she's uh, doing, oh, she's into a little bit of media stuff and, and promotions. That's what she's doing now. So she's going good. On the subject of food, punters were able to dine out courtesy of you yesterday at Wagga with Yumcha. Yeah, yeah, he's been a great little horse. Uh, he's not, he's nothing, nothing flash, but um, any time we thought he's been able to win and we could support him, we have, and he's delivered every time. Unfortunately, yesterday, about 40 yards after the um, after the line, he cracked a pedal, uh, uh, passed him, so... It was from there straight to the university and they worked on him for well, three or four hours and I got him back home now in a plaster cast, so hopefully it comes through that. I was about to say, did you have any words for the driver of the runner-up, your daughter Amy? No, well, she fancied her horse, actually. Um, yeah, she's changed a few things with him at home and had a bit of work done on him and um, she fancied him and he took a bit of, he took a bit of beating. It, um, it worked out worked out to my benefit, but... Um, there at the top of the straight, I didn't know whether I was going to wind him in or not. Speaking of Amy, she's enjoyed a lot of success in harness racing. Probably doesn't get the credit she deserves in that particular field, but she does get a lot of credit. She's an outstanding Oztag player. In fact, she will be representing Australia. Yeah, she um, she goes very good there, and um, she's in the in the Aussie squad. And I think these they asked her the other day whether she was available for the World Cup and whatnot. So looks like she might get a gig there if everything goes right. So she's certainly got dad's genes as far as rugby league and harness racing. Yeah, she, yeah you could say that, mate, yeah. You still follow the rugby league with a keen interest? Yeah, yeah, we're mad league supporters. Uh, Justin's still playing. Or they, he's just finished a season now and um, he, he was playing a bit of first grade at Goulburn. They fortunately ravaged with injuries and whatnot, so they dropped out of the, out of the top, uh, top four. Um, but yeah, we follow it very keenly. Any of those teams that made an offer all those years ago, is one of those teams one of the, you follow now? Yeah, oh, Cronulla Sharks, I've been
been an old Sharky supporter since Steve Rogers. He uh, he was sort of my idol when I was growing up. I loved watching him. And, um, yeah, we've stuck there and fortunate, fortunate enough we won a, won a comp there a couple of years ago, so it was good. Great to catch up with you, Neil. Thanks, Mick.